This is one of the most remarkable stories in Welsh maritime history. The Smalls Lighthouse is situated about 20 miles west of St. David's Peninsula in Pembrokeshire. The lighthouse was made of nine oak pillars and erected in 1776. It happened in 1801 when the now functional lighthouse was manned by two men. Thomas Howell and Thomas Griffith didn't get on very well and often argued. They had been thrust together 20 miles away from anywhere. Griffith became unwell and after weeks of suffering he died. Howell couldn't get help due to remove location and weather conditions. The man didn't throw the lifeless body in the ocean, since he was sure that he would be accused of murder. Instead, Howell decided to make a coffin and put it on a shelf outside. But the strong winds blew the coffin apart and the decomposing body was visible to Howell inside the hut. Around three weeks later, when the weather improved, a boat from Milford finally reached the Smalls. Howell was taken back to the Pembrokeshire shore. He wasn't the same man anymore, Howell was a broken man, deeply traumatized with gray hair. The gruesome episode brought about a change in lighthouse policy. From that year on it has been tradition in manned lighthouses for a crew of no less than three to be on duty at any one time. The lighthouse was built in 1808 and guided ships to Toronto's harbor until 1950s. It's the oldest lighthouse left on the Great Lakes and the second oldest in Canada. No wonder, it has its secrets. There is a local legend that the lighthouse is haunted by its first keeper, John Paul Radelmuller. On 2 January, 1815, Radelmuller met his end and it was a supposed murder. Though the details of what happened that night in January 1815 have been lost, legend says that two soldiers paid Radelmuller a visit for his bootleg beer. Sold to supplement his modest income. A dispute broke out, quickly escalated and culminated in the keeper's mysterious disappearance. It's believed that the keeper's remains were buried in a few graves near the lighthouse. Radelmuller's ghost is said to still haunt the site. The modern research has verified much of the traditional tale. And according to it, the Radelmuller's remains were found by the fourth lighthouse keeper, George Dernan. A dreadful accident has happened at the Flannans. The three keepers Duckett, Marshall and the Occasional have disappeared from the island. The clocks were stopped and other signs indicated that the accident must have happened about a week ago. Poor fellows, they must have been blown over the cliffs or drowned trying to secure a crane, this is the text of a telegram sent by Captain Harvey to the Northern Lighthouse Board dated December 26, 1900. But let's start from the very beginning. Flannan Isles Lighthouse is a lighthouse near the highest point on Eileen Moor, one of the Flannan Isles in the Outer Hebrides off the west coast of mainland Scotland. The odd thing started to happen on December 15, 1900, when in the log of the steamer Ankter was noted that the light was not operational in poor weather conditions. But the relief vessel was unable to get to the lighthouse due to bad weather conditions and reached the island only on December 26. The lighthouse was manned by three men but none came to welcome the vessel. The relief keeper was put ashore alone. He found the entrance gate and main door closed, the beds undone, the clock stopped, the lamps cleaned and refilled, but no sign of the lighthouse keepers. So four men were left on the island and the vessel returned to Lewis, where Captain Harvey sent the telegram. There was evidence of damage caused by recent storm, but no bodies were ever found. Instead, unusual log entries were discovered. So, on December 12th, presumably Thomas Marshall wrote severe winds the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. He also mentioned that James Duckett had been very quiet and Donald MacArthur had been crying, that would be highly strange for him to be crying in response to a storm. On the December 13th, it was noted that the storm was still raging and the men had been praying. That is quite an unusual reaction, since all three men were experienced lighthouse keepers and knew that they were safe inside. By the way there had been no reported storms in the area on the 12th, 13th and 14th of December. The final log entry was made on the 15th of December, starting, storm ended, sea calm. God is over all. But many believe that the story of log entries is not based on fact. Many researchers believe that the most plausible version is that the men were washed into the sea. The other theory proposes that one of the men went insane and killed the others, then threw bodies into the sea and jumped into his own death.